Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Joining me today is Sri Balagautamanji. We have been talking with him for a while now, but it's been a period of a few weeks uh, since we had him last on our channel. Balagautamanji, Namaskar and Namaste. welcome to P Guru's channel. Sir, you are a fount of information and uh, this uh, hangout viewers is very important. This is the fourth in the series of this drug episode that we have been covering about Jafar Sadiq and what has happened thus far is but a drop in the ocean. The, the drug trade and the amount of spreading it has taken place in the state of Tamil Nadu, it has to be seen to be believed. And Sri Balagautamanji has been following this for several years, it's not the first year. And uh, when I was talking to him, shall we do a little bit of an update on this? He said, well, finally something has happened, but a lot more needs to be done. Gautaman sir, um, please tell our viewers when you started sensing this Tamil Nadu becoming as bad or if not worse than Punjab. Well, it was happening in the coast. LTT was dominating this business before. After the fall of LTT, 2009. 2009, this business goes into the hand of the Islamic fundamentalists. For that purpose, the entire coastal Tamil Nadu, that is, the, I mean, the, in, with the Sri Lanka, we share only uh, Indo-Sri Lankan waters. It is not an international sea that passage. It's a shared water between India and Sri Lanka. It is not an international ship route. That is something that we need to keep in mind. So generally, Navy doesn't have that much role there. So mostly Coast Guard will be there. And again, uh, the, it is a shallow stretch of uh, sea between uh, the eastern coast of Tamil Nadu and western Sri Lanka. The Muslims populated the entire uh, coastal Tamil Nadu over a period of 20 years, that is starting from the 80s. So they moved some of their population from hinterland towards the uh, coastal areas. And then finally they settled people from outside in those areas. So apparently what happened after the LTT, the entire sea was taken over by them. The, Mushth, the fishermen are Hindus, but the people who are operating the fishermen are the Islamic jihadists. So whenever a news comes in the paper, they say, okay, a Tamil fisherman caught in Sri Lanka with the drug. This is a very common news. And in Tamil Nadu, every newspaper speaks about it. But no one speaks about who is operating this fisherman. Unless or otherwise this issue is going to go to this level, the, this problem is going to continue because it is politically a big issue in Tamil Nadu. It is again politically a major issue there in Sri Lanka. So you can whip a fashion in Tamil Nadu by using the Tamil fishermen are caught over there by Sri Lankan Navy, that is the Shingalese Navy. And again for them, the northern part of Sri Lanka, they say that oh, so you Tamil fishermen, you are suffering because of Indian fishermen. So it is a uh, politics where the local Tamil community in Sri Lanka is pitted against India. And again, the local uh, Tamil fishermen in, in, uh, in our country are pitted against the central government, which is not saving them. So this trade is going on for years. And it is, uh, I mean, to me, it is a very, uh, where, wherever I go, in, in some other part of the country or even outside, People are talking about why Tamil fishermen are peddling drugs. But nobody is asking me, are they peddling on their own or who is operating them? So always the victim is a common fisherman. But the scene behind it is totally not exposed. I think that this case should do it. And there is, uh, well, since I say that uh, there is a probability of this. I have several instances. He still has been not caught, right? No, he is still uh, at large. Yeah. He is at large, he is not caught. Look, in 2017, I mean, August to September, somewhere, a consignment of Tramadol got caught at Genoa Airport, uh, sea, a port in Italy. 
uh, the Italian uh, officers they seized around um, uh, tramadol. Tramadol is a painkiller drug which is used in battlefield mm. and it is worth about 50 million euros at that time. I am talking about 2017, it is mm. worth about that. Around 24 million uh, tablets got seized in Italy. That consignment was uh, supposed to reach the ISIS. So it originated in Punjab. It went to Sri Lanka. From Sri Lanka, it went to Italy. From Italy, it has to go to Syria. Uh, this is the route through which it has to travel. So when that issue came up, we raised uh, this issue at that time in our own channel and other uh, thing that uh, look, drug supply is happening to ISIS from Tamil Nadu and this is one uh, consignment which is going and you know the place of origin of this drug is from Punjab. That is the entry route and the exit route to ISIS is Tamil Nadu. It goes to Sri Lanka. So now you can see the inlet and outlet of India. One is Punjab, that is the inlet. And again for any drug it can be peddled from Afghanistan through Pakistan to India and then it goes to Sri Lanka and from there it takes up this. That is why I mentioned that this water is Indo-Sri Lankan water is not an international sea route. After Sri Lanka then you have the international sea route so it easily it goes because Colombo is a major port on the other side. Now Hamban Tota has come up. So that this is the channel through which the drug traffic flows. For that now Punjab we all know what Punjab is today. It has become a drug capital. So the inlet is now secured for the peddlers and now the outlet is getting secured. So this trend picked up after 2010 in a very huge way. And it was until it, uh, some checks and balances till the DMK came to power. And now it is free for all. And one person I want to mention in this episode is our uh, previous Director General of Police, Mr. Sailendra Babu. He was taking care of the coastal security at that particular point of time. And during that period, the entire coastal security got compromised. And later on he became the DGP of Tamil Nadu. And when he was the DGP of Tamil Nadu, I mean after getting his promotion, Entire Tamil Nadu become uh, drug capital. And even our Stalin, our chief minister, he mentioned a couple of times that I will become a dictator to control drug menace. But nothing happened because it is most of the cases, the people who are getting caught are mostly from his own party. So it is a nexus between the drug peddlers and the ruling party members, not the party I mean, as a whole but many of the members are involved. And then again, the third aspect that we need to know is the involvement of fundamental Muslim organization in it. One Abdul Basid Bukhari, uh, he is from National Tawheed Jamaat. And when we are talking today, he is going to have a program in Chennai, this Abdul Basid Bukhari. And Jafar Sadiq is the person who is accused in this particular drug racket. From reliable sources I learned that this Abdul Basit Bukhari is a partner to this Jafar Sadiq in a, uh, in a uh, business here in Chennai. It is called some cafe. I mean I, I mean, I forget the name after, I will let you know during the course of the conversation. He is a partner to this man. And when the issue of uh, smuggling tramadol to Italy came up, some uh, elements of Tawheed in uh, Sri Lanka are involved in those things. Now Sadiq, partner to this national Tawheed for a, uh, guy, and again some Tawheedi organizations are involved in uh, smuggling drug to Italy. Now we can collect the dots and how it operates. And when Tamil Nadu is seeing this type of uh, drug supporting government here, there in Sri Lanka, Ranul Vikramasinghe has lifted ban on five Tauhid organizations recently. 
So this menace is going to be uh, higher in the coming days because Sri Lanka is going to have elections and Ranil is going for compromise with Muslim, rabid Muslim organizations because he knows that um, he is not a natural leader but Rajapakshas are not like that. So since he wants to counter them, so he needs to get the support of the Muslim organizations and he is ready for any level of compromise. So two drug powerhouses operating on either side of the border, like there in Punjab, on the supply side, you have Pakistan, sub getting supplies from Afghanistan and peddling into Punjab. Here and again a, a strong Khalistani type of mindset and here again a decisive, I mean, a divisive mindset in the name of Dravidianism or Tamil or whatever you may call. So the political atmosphere is also created in both these places to do this activity. And this is one grave danger that this country has to encounter. And again coming back to the next two point and this Jafar Sadiq, he is close to one Amir, a cinema guy. So this Amir uh, is having links with this Tauhi Jamaat leaders for a quite long time. Some of my friends who got killed by Islamic fundamentalists like uh, Professor Paramashivam in Madurai and other people. I heard from some sources which are close to the uh, other uh, the Muslim uh, side that this Amir helped uh, Jainul Abdi uh, who is the chief conspirator of many murders of Hindus then and even now I mean now he is nowhere because PFI has overtaken him so now he is nowhere so at that time Jainul Abdi is a master behind uh, plotting um, killings and other stuff and he funded many at that particular point of time Amir is associated with that Jainul Abdin and Amir is present in some of those areas also. These are the statements that come from the Muslim side and some of these things were posted by the Muslims themselves in uh, social media and other stuff. That Jainul Abdin's helper is Amir and this guy is associated with Amir. And again the partner of this Jafar Sadiq in this cafe business is from Tawheed Jamaat. So this connection between organizations, involvement of these organizations in murder and jihadi terror, involvement of these organizations in supporting or peddling drugs to some other countries and these are all the dots that you need to connect. Unfortunately, I mean even in Tamil Nadu, even BJP is saying, yes, this Jafar Sadiq is close to a DMK, he is an office bearer of a DMK unit. And this is how the entire propaganda missionary goes. But no one looks deep into this. This is a more sinister relationship going on. Yes. And again, this drug menace, it was very high. When Mr. Sailendra Babu was the DGP of Tamil Nadu, and during this period, the entire so uh, coastal security was uh, compromised. Look at all these links. Connect all these dots. Then you will come to know that this Jafar Sadiq, what case that the government has caught now, is just a tip of an iceberg. And uh, as far as I am concerned, this is one area where the government has got a very strong foundation to dig deep. And this opportunity should not go waste. Now you have this guy. Secure him. Go deep into the case. Because previously there was one organization, uh, base movement was uh, uh, unearthed near Madurai. Okay, the case they have I mean, done something in the case. But I am not convinced because they should have gone even more deeper. So the underlying network mostly goes uncaught. But that will again come up. Unless or otherwise you are not going to eradicate the root of it. Yes, indeed. And this synthetic drugs takes on a new dimension because you don't need to grow it like poppy. You just need a lab. You just need somebody to give you the formula. You just need pseudoephedrine. That's it. And, and you are in business. 
and uh, viewers all we can tell you we don't want to play doomsday here and again i can tell you one thing even in the lab you don't require very big facilities no also. no another i mean you say you know, 20 to 20 to 20 room is enough for you to produce more drugs worth millions of rupees and that is something that we need to understand. Yes, yes. The space constraint is not there. And again, uh, you can even do it in your basement floor or if you, if you have a big car park. You can do it from there itself. Yes, yes. Unless India gets something like a death penalty for holding drugs, you will not be able to control this. And also, you have a hostile neighbor or a worse, I should say. If China doesn't get it, Pakistan will get you. It's, uh, it's much more serious viewers. Again, this is just a Just to add on to your point, as you said that China or Pakistan, the government seized the drugs worth around 30,000 crores from Gujarat. After a year or so, they seized the same amount of 30,000 crores somewhere in South India. Just imagine if this is the value. After a catch, your first catch is of 30,000 crores. Right. And within a an year, you have another 30,000 crores. Then just imagine how much of investment has gone into it. Correct, correct. And it is not Pakistan alone which is doing it. Yes. Because Pakistan itself is finding uh, difficult to even feed their own mouths. Right, right. So it is basically China which is pumping the drug. And uh, Pakistan is used as a base to enter into India. Right. And again China, and this is one thing that viewers need to understand that the presence of Chinese is on the rise in northern part of Sri Lanka. And this is why it's an alarming situation which is going on. So, the inlet and outlet which I am talking about earlier, inlet is operated by China, outlet is also getting into the hands of Chinese. Chinese right. And this relationship is again something that we need to watch. That is why I, uh, I feel that this Jafar Sadiq case, the government has to dig deep and they have to invest more. And the state will not help you, 100%. No doubt. 100%. No doubt. The state is not. I can tell you, the uh, Drug Control Bureau was uh, searching a house there in uh, North Chennai. It is of some DMK office bearer. One per person from a polymer, a local news channel is covering that. DMK goons came and they beat him out. Yes, yes. This happened three days back. Correct. And not even a single journalist union writes their voice against him. Correct. Correct. That, that again you have to see the nexus between the journalist or the media with the drug mafia. Right. So the party, the DMK party man beating a journalist and no journalist is being raising a voice because that is done by a DMK person. And again, one or two newspapers covered the DMK men beat up this journalist. But the issue of the raid was conducted by the Drugs Control Bureau is missing. Yes, yes. That is why I just want to clarify and again just want to fortify your point that the state government is not going to support you at any point of time. Also, last line, right? Um, the kind of money that is sloshing about to all these people at the council level, panchayat level, taluk level, they have never seen this kind of money because drugs can give you that kind of money and then still make money for them because I told you before, 100,000, 100x profit sometimes. So they can just throw their money about so that these councillors won't ask any questions. India has its work cut out, that's all I can say. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Somebody has to tell the truth. And Balaji, thank you so much. And uh, viewers, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I, I usually like to leave with a positive note. Here, the positivity is save your children, save their future. Thank you so much, sir. Namaste. Namaskar.